Good evening and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video is a continuation of my series with uh, Castles and Crusades. Uh, I've been focusing on the 2006, uh, you know, the 2006 copies that I have here. But as I've been looking over some of the other, um, the other printings, such as this is the 2014, I've started to realize that the, um, that the information, you know, just the, um, the systems and, and the mechanics are essentially the same going from one printing to the next with, with very few exceptions. And since I do have access to the PDF on some of the later editions, uh, or I should say printings, uh, I didn't with the 2006. And so I will where there is no difference in the, um, you know, in the content, uh, I will use the PDF rather than just using the, the drop down uh, view from my, my other camera on the book. That way you can better easily follow along what I'm taking a look at and um, so so in the future uh, I'm probably not going to do a series of videos on like the 2014 range of uh, of printings that I do have uh, but I will once I'm done with this series of the earlier printings I will talk about uh, in separate videos the latest printings uh, because I, I think there, the formatting, um, you, you will see the difference in the formatting and in some of the organization of it, uh, much clearer and easier to follow, a lot more graphics and such. So I will do more in-depth um, flip-throughs of those books to show off the formatting changes and the art and, and such as that goes. Uh, and, and like I said, some of the mechanics might have been tweaked along the way uh, and when that occurs I will I will focus on that as well. So without further ado let's take a look at the magic system of Castles and Crusades. So I am going to switch views here and here we have it. So uh, and once again this is from the 2014 printing of the uh, player's handbook and the magic system is identical uh, going from 2006 to 2014 other than the introduction of this photograph uh, you know this picture and just formatting differences so <coughs> oh excuse me so magic is broken down oh sorry <coughs> oh Sorry about that. Um, magic is broken down into uh, arcane magic, divine magic, illusion magic, and then uh, there are spell components, there's spells, there's spell slots, there's bonus spells, known spells, prepared spells, spell resistance. All right, so these are all of the major components of the magic system, and many of these should sound fairly familiar to you um, if you are going from uh, your, your knowledge base of Dungeons and Dragons to Castles and Crusades. So arcane magic is the type of magic learned by wizards and illusionists. Wizards and illusionists uh, spells are referred to as arcane spells. Divine magic, the type of magic granted to clerics and druids by the deity or other mystical forces Cleric and Druid spells are referred to as divine spells. Illusion magic, the type of magic mastered by illusionists. Illusion magic is a type of arcane magic, but is inherently different from a wizard's magic since the effects are all in the mind. Components are uh, various aspects of components, are uh, elements or ingredients. There are physical components. There are uh, semantic or... Um, or, or verbal components. There are semantic uh, components of motions and gestures. 
There are material components, as I mentioned, physical. Uh, there is focus, where you have to concentrate, which is a component of uh, spells, uh, virtually all spell casting. And then there's divine focus, which uh, to a specific object or religious significance. So there are a um, number of different components, and they're important in this uh, in this magic system. Spell a spell is a formula a character uses to harness magic and to give it form, and the casting of which results in a specific magical effect. Spell slots the number of spells at each spell level that a character can prepare each day as reflected on the character class table. Um, you have spell bonuses, additional spells that can be cast each day as a result of a high score and a related attribute. Um, so this is probably sounding very, um, very D&D-esque because it is, in fact, the Vancean system of, uh, of magic. In other words, the number of spells and the level of spells that you can cast is based on your character's overall level. Um, so that's, you know, AD&D, you know, straight up, you know, Dungeons and Dragons prior to that as well, uh, and a continuation on forward. Uh, what, what's added here uh, is that the, the bonus spells gives you additional spells that can be cast each day as a result of a high score in a related attribute. And I'll focus on that when I, when I get to it. Um, then there are known spells, the spells in a wizard's spell book, or the spells allowed by a cleric or druid or deity, uh, druid's deity, from which a character can select and prepare spells each day. Prepared spells is the spells memorized or prayed for that are ready for the character to cast. Spell resistance is basically the saving throw based on spells. But the, um, the spells don't have like a very generic saving throw, such as in AD&D. Uh, they're, they're much more specific uh, to the type of spell being cast. So the nature of magic, and, and I won't get fully into this because I, I kind of explained it a little bit. Um, the four classes, four classes can cast spells, clerics, druids, illusionists, and wizards. Um, and then they go into and they talk about the differences. So, uh, magic used by clerics and druids is classified as divine. And I already went over this, so I, I don't need to go any more detail of that. Preparing spells, uh, wizards and illusionists must study, um, over, you know, typically a night of, uh, of study. They need typically between six and eight hours of study to learn the number of spells that they have. And I will go a little bit more into detail here. Uh, so wizards and illusionists can learn complex arcane formulas to harness magic and give it, effect, uh, give it effect. Their spells are known as arcane spells. Let's continue on. The wizard spell book is typically quite large in size and thickness, averaging about four pages per spell. New spells may be learned and added to spellbook through gaining a level by copying from another spellbook or from scrolls and through research. Each day, a wizard or illusionist memorizes they prepare the spells they intend to cast during the day. A character's level limits the number of spells the character can prepare and cast each day, although a high or low intelligence score might grant bonuses or take away from the typical number of daily spells gained. A wizard or illusionist must have access to a spell book to study and sufficient light to read in order to prepare the spells. A character can use a borrowed spell book or a spell book written by another magic user to prepare a spell the character already knows and has recorded in the character's own spellbook, but read magic must first be cast in order to decipher the writing in the book. All right, um, see acquiring new spells. So basically, yes, you can use another magic user's spellbook 
in order to memorize a spell you already knew. However, you will have to cast a read magic uh, when using someone else's spell book because when a magic user or an illusionist write their spell into, uh, into their spell book, it becomes a unique formula just for them. And so they don't have to recast uh, read magic when they're doing it, but any other trying to use their spell book would have to do that for each, uh, for each time that they're trying to copy a spell from one book to another. A character needs to sleep and rest for a total of eight hours each day before preparing spells. The character need not slumber for every minute of that time, but must refrain from movement, combat, spell casting, or any other fairly demanding physical or mental task during the rest period. If the character's rest is interrupted, each interruption adds one hour to the total amount of time the character has to rest in order to clear his or her mind. A character must have at least one hour of rest immediately prior to preparing spells for the day. If the character does not need to sleep for some reason, the character still must have eight hours of restful calm each day before preparing any spells. When a character prepares a spell for the coming day, all spells the character has cast within the last eight hours count against the character's daily limit of spells of that specific level. In addition to the complete, uh, uh, I'm sorry, in addition to the complete hour of rest immediately prior to preparing spells for the day, it takes 15 minutes per spell for a character to study a spell book and memorize the spell for the day. A character needs not prepare a full complement of spells allowed per day, but prepare every one spell takes at least one hour of rest and 15 minutes of study. All right, so um, let's say you have three first level spells that you can prepare for the day and you decide I'm only going to prepare two of them and I'm going to leave one open slot. Well, in order to prepare that spell later on in the day, you will have to devote one hour of study and then 15 minutes of memorization in order to now slot that open slot that you had left behind, you know, that you had left in reserve, let's say. So, and that's one thing I've noticed about this system that is, you know, at least stands out. It's much more clear. Um, if it was not Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st Edition, um, however, some of these, you know, some of these nuances in the magic system uh, make it much more, uh, much more of a dedication of time. And later on, you'll see money uh, in... Uh, in actually being a magic user and preparing your spells and creating and preparing your spell books. So it's, it's a much more nuanced and, and, and complex system uh, in, the, in the acquisition and preparation of spells. Uh, but it is, um, it's, but there's more access to spells uh, than in AD&D first edition uh, as a comparison. Um, so, and that comes from the intelligence bonus, which doesn't really exist uh, in AD&D first edition, where you don't get extra spells that you can cast um, based on your intelligence. So we will move on. So clerics and druids are a little bit different. So they prepare their spells in a largely the same manner. However, they choose and prepare spells ahead of time just as a wizard or illusionist, but clerics and druids do not require spell books. Instead, clerics select and prepare spells ahead of time through prayer and meditation at a particular time of day. Some deities set their time or impose other special conditions for granting spells to their clerics. If some event prevents 
the character from praying at the proper time the character must do so as soon as possible thereafter if the character does not stop to pray for spells at the first opportunity the character must wait until the next day to prepare spells the time required for a divine spellcaster to prepare spells is the same as for a wizard there must be eight hours of rest each day before prayer and at least one hour of rest must be immediately prior to the prayer it takes 15 minutes per spell to pray for and receive the spell there must be a relatively peaceful environment in which to pray unlike arcane magic users whose choice of spells is limited to those in their spell book a cleric or a cleric or a druid may pick any spell from the applicable spell list unless the character's deity imposes a restriction all right so again a lot more preparation time uh, incorporated in here you can imagine if your if your uh, cleric or magic user has 15 spells that they can cast during the day uh, that is going to add you know an additional um, 150 plus another 75 so you know over over two hours of uh, of additional time that they'll need just to pray for their you know just to accumulate their spells or have their spells available to them so it's a much more complex and and um requirement for dedication of time in in order to be a spell caster acquiring new spells so wizards and illusionists uh if they desire all other treasure the acquisition of new spells for their spell books wizards and illusionists learn and add new spells through several methods by gaining a level they gain new spells by deciphering spells to decipher a spell is another spell uh, book or scroll the character must first cast a read magic on the spell to decipher it learning and copying spells a character must first decipher the spell contained in the spell book or scroll as described above thereafter the character can learn the new spell from the book by spending one day plus one day per level of the spell being learned in study of it the per so again you know if you're if you're learning a fifth level spell it's going to take you one day plus an additional five you know so a total of six days to learn that new spell much much more complicated than what was uh involved in uh the acquisition of of new spells in a d d first edition writing spells once a wizard understands a new spell it can be copied into the spell book this pro the process requires one day plus one additional day per spell level zero level spells require just one day a spell takes up to one page of a spell book per spell level a zero spell takes up a single page a normal spell book has 200 pages material for writing spells cost 100 gold pieces per page of the spell so again a fifth level spell is going to take you six days to include it in your spell book it's going to take it's going to cost 600 gold pieces to include it in your spell book and it is going to take up uh it is going to take up uh spell takes up to one page per spell per spell level so that one spell is going to take up five pages of your 100 page spell book replacing spell books the same procedure for learning a spell is used to reconstruct a lost spell book if a character already has a particular spell prepared the character can write it directly into a new spell book at a cost of 100 gold pieces per page 
the process wipes out a prepared spell from the character's mind, just as casting it would. If the spell is not prepared, the character may not reconstruct it from memory, but can prepare it from a borrowed spell book and then write it into his own. Duplicating an existing spell book uses the same procedure as replacing it, except the time requirement and cost per page are halved. All right, so that's that's where if you're replacing an old spell book um, and you have some of the information like already stored in your mind, or uh, it was you're just transferring from one spell book that you already have to another, uh, then it's going to cost half the amount per page uh, that it would have, and and I would assume that that includes time as well, um, even though they don't specifically say it. Research a character can also research a spell independently, duplicating an existing spell for the spell list or creating an entirely new one. At the end of the process, the caster must write the spell into the spell book. So reading a scroll into a spell book, a character must first decipher the spell contained on the scroll by casting read magic. Because a scroll is magical and the reduction of the spell to the scroll involves all the necessary components for casting the spell from the scroll, the character can simply read a scroll into the spell book. Doing so copies the spell to the character's spell book and destroys the scroll in the process. All right, so that is by far the, the, the easiest way to get a new spell transferred into your spell book is by reading it directly from a scroll. It is easier. It is cheaper. Um, it will still take up the same number of pages in the scroll book, but you don't have the costs uh, involved with it, or at least some of the costs involved with it. Illusionist spells uh, tend to baffle and confuse players of castles and crusades alike. The source of the illusion is often a confusing as the illusion itself. The word illusion itself seems to connote the magic users. Magic is purely illusionary, unreal meaning, and strong or schooled mind can see thor through the illusion's trickery and machinations. Uh, machinations and entirely ignore its effects. Yet, this could not be more wrong. Some of the illusions are in fact simple illusions, which others are the mind's conquest over matter, and still others are channeled magic displayed with such force that their conjured elements are as real, real as a wizard's magic missile or a cleric's spiritual weapon. To understand the illusionist spells, we must first understand the illusionist. The illusionist is a magic-using class with ti whose title does not necessarily equate to his skill set. Illusionist is a class description, a generalized word establishing distance from the wizard. It defines a class that uses magic in a subtle but very different manner than magic use, uh, than wizard, druid, or cleric. He is not a trickster. The illusionist has no skills that allow him to fool or trick his targets into believing something is what it isn't. Such skills belong to the domain of the street urchin, jester, or other buffoon who has no recourse in making his way in the world than tricking others through his sleight of hand. The illusionist is a master of magic. He bends his back in years of study to rise to the level of even a beginner in his craft. The illusionist is a master of time and substance. His abilities transcend the simple illusions of a trickster Rather, the illusionist conjures material from the essence of the world around him. His illusions are not simply parlor tricks to fool the weak of mind, but are powerful incantations drawing upon his own powerful mind. He weaves these musings with magic drawn from the world around him, thereby fabricating the very stuff of reality. Illusionists can literally create something from nothing. So 
really see that, you know, just the utter glorification of illusionists in here. Uh, so it really is quite, uh, quite interesting that they, um, you know, that they went with this. And uh, it really does put, it separates the illusionist from, from the idea, oh, they're, they're tricksters. And I really like that aspect of this. Um, and, and it really does glorify the illusionist in comparison to uh, the other casting um, classes. So, and that's really quite interesting. Although any of these casting classes, you can see the level of dedication that this system really um, forces the player uh, to adhere to. Uh, so it is, it is no simple choice to be an, an illusionist or a, uh, or a wizard or even a cleric or a druid. Uh, they're, they are going to have to be prepared to have their characters set aside large amounts of time uh, in each day. Uh, and, and sometimes, like in the, in the case of, of uh, clerics or druids, uh, it might even be required a certain time of day that is not the typical time that uh, adventurers would usually stop for the evening and sleep through the night kind of thing as well. So um, really, really plays an important role. And it's something very, very interesting, uh, at least to me. I, I think it's, it's an incredible system uh, to try to um, role-play it. You know, and that, that's the, the key point here, is that the, you know, these players are going to have to role-play this uh, with their characters. And, and that would be you know, just a whole new element of, of playing these particular character classes. So in CNC, the illusionist actually does have some ability to heal. All right. Um, I'm jumping down to the second paragraph here. In CNC, illusionists can heal damage. They heal damage in the same manner in which they cause damage, not by tricking their target, but rather by projecting their own magical power into the target and changing the nature of time and substance. They do not trick the target's mind into physically healing itself. That assumption assumes the target is mentally able to do such a, such a thing. The power of the illusionist does not reside in the target. The illusionist's power solely resides in the illusionist. Illusionists heal through their own magic while a cleric channels the magic of the deity serving as a bridge between the deity and the target to heal. An illusionist channels and or controls the natural magic of the world around him using the target's own mind as a bridge between the magic and the target. The more powerful the illusionist, the greater his ability to cross that bridge. So clerics and druids, clerics and druids cast divine magic. Let's see where we get some additional nuance here. Uh, let's see, they prepare and cast. We already talked about that. Other divine spellcasters who find the spell in written form can learn to cast and provide it. They are sufficient level to do so and are the same class as the creator. All right, that's kind of common sense. Divine magical writings, divine spells can be written down and deciphered just as arcane spells can, except read magic is not used to do so. Instead, the character can decipher and learn the new spell from the scroll by spending one day plus one day per level of the spell being learned in study of it. Only a character who have the spell in question on their class-based spell list can cast a divine spell from the, a scroll. Casting spells. A character who wishes to cast a spell announces his intention to the castle keeper during the character's initiative turn. A character must make all pertinent decisions about the spell 
range target area effect when the character begins casting unless the spell specifi specifies otherwise. The character must make some choice about whom the spell is to affect or where the effect is to originate depending on the type of spell. The castle keeper applies whatever results a spell entails using the spell description. Okay, um, concentration. To cast a spell, a character must concentrate. If something interrupts the character's concentration while the caster is casting, a spell is lost and marked off the character's list of prepared spells. Sometimes a castle keeper may allow a concentration check against the appropriate ability, typically intelligence or dexterity, to see if the spell is simply disrupted and not lost, or even not interrupted uh, and casting is still completed. All right, um, so again, this is something that, you know, I will admit I don't often do, even in my AD&D campaign, um, you know, I, I've very, very rarely think about uh, a character uh, having their spell interrupted um, unless it's a um, unless it's a simultaneous initiative and you know they get hit by a uh, by an archer, let's say, and and so the you know the missile the missile rounds are. are um, uh, missile attacks or ranged attacks are take place before magic attacks, generally speaking. So that would be the one instance where I can see that you can really disrupt the magic user's ability to cast a spell is if you are hitting them in a simultaneous initiative uh, process. All right. However, here they seem to imply that it's not just under that normal circumstance that interruptions can occur for a variety of different ways uh, or reasons and and then the the castle keeper will will make a determination whether or not um, a save is allowed or uh, if, if a save even fails like what's the full effect of that failure Getting hurt or being affected by hostile magic while trying to cast a spell can break the character's concentration and ruin the spell. Um, we typically only do that again in AD&D when the spell has a very long casting time and so it gets interrupted. Um, typically speaking, you don't do that when you have a spell that's cast in, in like six segments, which is less than a full round. You know, or something like that, or even one segment uh, is virtually impossible to interrupt that. It goes so fast. Um, but again, it's uh, quite it's quite interesting to keep these things in mind. Um, and, and this magic system kind of makes you do that. Using scrolls, scrolls are our spells are reduced to a portable uh, form. Not only does the scroll contain the text of the spell, all the necessary components except for verbal, and have it magically incorporated into the scroll. Before using a scroll, a character must decipher it by casting read magic. The character can then read the scroll aloud, casting the spell contained on it just as if the character had the spell prepared. The spell casting range, area effect, duration, and all of the other details and limitations are no different. A spell contained on a scroll may only be cast once. When the spell is cast from the scroll, the spell disappears or destroys the scroll. There are some limitations on the use of scrolls, of course. A character must be the class that can cast the type of spells contained on the scroll. For example, a druid cannot cast a wizard spell from a scroll, All right, which we already knew that. That's uh, fairly common. So spell, uh, spell format, spell description format. So casting time. I found this to be really interesting when I first came across it. Um, not because casting time isn't a thing in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons or other versions of Dungeons and Dragons, but some of these really struck me and I'm waiting to see the, the spells that specifically do this. So most spells take one round to cast. 
A spell that takes one round of CT1 to cast comes into effect during the caster's initiative turn for that round. Complex spells may take uh, more time to cast, such as casting times are expressed in rounds, RD, minutes in a minute, hours in an hour, turns and turns equal to one minute or six rounds, or days. For relative understanding of casting time, a round is 10 seconds. So I've seen spells that take a full turn to cast such as um, a, a Druid's Call Lightning, all right? But that's like one of the rare ones that, that really take a lot of time. When they're talking about spells that take days, I, I just can't wait to come across the spell and the ability of that spell uh, to see that it actually takes days in order to, um, you know, in order to... Uh, initiate it and and pull it off and, and just imagine the level of concentration that you would have to maintain uh the fact that you're you know potentially not sleeping you know during that amount of time so uh really looking forward to getting deeper into this system and seeing you know where that really comes into play uh, Range, you know, spell range is, is very common. Area effect is another one. Targeted spells, area spells. You have bursts, combs, cylinders, emanations, spells which have an area like a burst, but effect continues to radiate from one from the point of origin and then outwards. Saving throws. So saving throws uh, are, are basically like a challenge level. Uh, that uh, makes it harder to cast the spell or harder for the spell's effect to have an effect. Uh, they can negate. Uh, your spell effect can be partial. It could be half. It could be nullified or none. Uh, disbelief is successful save lets the subject ignore the effect. Object, the spell can be cast on objects which receive a saving throw only if they are magical, or if the spell specifies otherwise, harmless, a parenthetical parentheses H indicates a harmless spell. The spell is usually not harmful, but a target creature can attempt a saving throw if it wishes. Voluntary giving up saving throws uh, is a thing. <laughs> you can actually volunteer uh, to accept the, um, the effects of a spell. Items surviving after a saving throw. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into a little bit more detail when this comes up later. Um, components, they're pretty standard. Divine components can be very specific. Uh, so not only just like the, the holy symbol, but for druids, they might have uh, different uh, components from nature, like a, sp a sprig of uh, mistletoe, as I mentioned here, or some holly, or some other type of thing. And I'm not going to go into the, um, the actual spell descriptions or lists or such, um, you know, at least not until a later date. Uh, I'll spend some more time with that. But, oop. so let's go back here. So as you can see, I mean, there's a lot here. And, and that's only covering, you know, less than probably less than 10 pages, you know, I had gone through and you could see the amount of detail and nuance that is in the magic system. And um, again, you know, I don't want you to come away from it thinking, wow, that's really complicated. Um, you're going to have a limited number of spells that you can cast, you know, at, at especially at lower levels. And so... It's not that much for you to, you know, really think about and, and uh, you know, remember. Uh, also, start to, because you have to make those uh, determinations of, you know, what range are you shooting it at? And, um, you know, because you can obviously adjust your range that you're firing up to your maximum, but then within your, your minimum as well. And, um, 
you know, what area effect are you going to look to, you know, have it either focus in on or expand out to, again, its maximum and such. So there's, there's different uh, ways that you can manipulate your own spell. And um, since this is your, your bread and butter as a magic casting class, um, you're really going to put a lot of thought into this. You're, you're, you're dedicating a lot of time to this. And, uh, and I think it's all elements that you can role play and role play well. Um, and, and that's the one thing that I really like about these more traditional role playing games is that, um, that they do focus more on actual role playing versus, you know, um, rolling dice and, and seeing results and things like that, you have to be much more uh, thoughtful about how you're attaining your magic and, and, you know, when are you utilizing it? How are you setting aside time to, um, you know, to uh, prepare your spells? And in particular, um, you know, you are going to be uh, getting hit with a lot of uh, coin costs in uh, in leveling up uh, because of the you know transferring new spells to your book and your book being only 100 pages you might have to have several books that you are going to have in in one stockpile of uh, of spell books and then you might have another book that you're focusing on uh, filling it up with just the spells that you primarily use. And again, that's another meaningful choice that uh, magic users and illusionists are going to, um, are going to have to maintain and, 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 you know, uh, make on a, on a very, you know, frequent basis. Uh, so it's a, the magic system makes the, the casting, um, classes, uh, very, um, very contemplative, very, you know, um, you really have to think about them and, uh, and they're, they're going to be challenging and, um, and that's a, you know, a huge bonus, I think, to playing any of these classes is the fact that, um, you know, you are going to have to be a dedicated, uh, spell user. And, and that's, you know, just, you know, I, I think all of the, the benefits of playing the classes are, are really going to come from that more so than, um, more so than just, uh, any other class that you might play that is, you know, much more simple, uh, to play than these. So once again, I mean, really impressive stuff, uh, you know, I, I'm going to wrap it up here, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, uh, if you're much more familiar with this system than, than I am, because this is really the first time that I'm digging through this system and trying to, to get, uh, you know, trying to pull as much information as I can out of it. Uh, this is an unscripted and unchained look at it. So, and, and that really does mean that I'm, I'm really digging through this, you know, as deeply as I am in real time. And, you know, so if, if you know something better than I do, please feel free to jump out there in the comments section and say, Hey, you interpreted this, uh, wrong or, you know, or this is how I see this particular thing. You might want to consider that. And I, I certainly welcome that as well. So, uh, once again, thanks for joining. I hope you liked this video. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And um, I am going to have some, uh, some special news about Castles and Crusades coming out within the next day or two. Uh, once I get some things solidified. And uh, once that happens, then I will, I will come out. So look for sometime uh, around midweek or you know, Thursday at the latest. Uh, for some for some big channel news about castles and crusades. So once again, thanks for joining. Have a, a great rest of your weekend, and I look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen sometime soon. Have a great evening.